Hello everyone and in this video I'm going to try and show you how based on my seven uh, major reasons why people's photographs often suck photographs that are taken when on holiday uh, as a tourist or just when you're out in your own town and you want to take some nice photographs creative ones and they they just don't turn out as nicely as you wanted them to I'll try and show you how I try uh, to make my photographs as good as I as I wanted them to. Um, so let's start with uh, number one again. It was uh, because I've already done a video on this, but I very quickly showed some photographs. This time I'm going to look at them in some more detail, telling you some techniques I've used. So uh, the first one was that uh, photographs are often boring and cliched, especially of famous monuments. Here's one of Notre Dame. Uh, sorry, yes, <laughs> Notre Dame. Uh, pretty straightforward, you know, there it is. Oh, look, I've seen Notre Dame. The person has obviously lifted their camera to their eye. Uh, tried to get both edges in and click there it is Notre Dame but what's so exceptional about that um, you know it's pretty straightforward but uh, uh, let me show you a photograph where I tried to be a bit more original here we are um, obviously I've used some special effects and stuff but that's what that's what you can do you know we have the right to do that afterwards and uh, I've almost tried to turn it into a picture, a postcard, almost as though I were advertising Paris, but then that, that's just by the by. Um, as you can see, there's, photo, there's um, a whole ton of uh, flowers there, and if you were standing looking at uh, this from where I was, you wouldn't really see those unless you looked really down at your feet and saw this border. So I was actually crawling on the ground, uh, shooting up to get those flowers looking like they go halfway up the side of Notre Dame. Um, obviously I've played around afterwards with the uh, the contrast of the cloud and so on which has come out very nicely. I've put in a gr grimy effect um, and I've got away from the fact that the the picture was a bit you know it was sloping and so on because I've just gone over the top and it almost looks like Notre Dame is in a field or something doesn't it which is quite nice I think. Uh, here's the picture I showed you last time of the Eiffel Tower dead center how boring is that uh, it's not leaning over to one side or the other we can we can give them that but there's just nothing very exciting about this photograph you know it's boring flat uh, the sort of thing that um, you would get if you lifted your camera to eye level and clicked which is not what street photography is about now I was out at night once and I took this shot how did I do it well it's on an iPhone so don't believe that a you need an amazing camera to to get amazing shots. Um, I mean, you might think the iPhone is amazing, which it is, but it's amazing as a as a tool. It's not amazing as a as a camera. Um, so I was actually throwing my iPhone around as I took the photograph. It was in some serious motion when I took this shot, and uh, I was if you see that whirly bit there, I was actually whirling the iPhone in a kind of circular motion, as it were, to get this fuzzy effect and the grain just adds to it and the fact that, that uh, l the light that's coming out of the top of the tower there is nicely in the photograph going into it is not a coincidence you know I took the time and that was one of many shots that I took as well but uh, I took the time this is a nice sort of composition here this this whizzy bit which fills in the bottom and up to the middle of the left in the picture and this goes up to the top right and that goes into what's left of the picture there. So, you know, sort of a lot of experimentation, but very little actually left to chance in terms of what I wanted to achieve, which I think you'll, uh, you should agree is, is a world away from, from this, you know, for what it is. All right, uh, then we had n no subject at all, um, which is, is often the case. In a lot of pictures, it's really difficult to know what, what the subject is. I showed you this one. And then I showed you, I mean, to get the subject, it's just got to be, it's got to be big, really. Um, it's got to be big and obvious. Uh, so, for example, here, the guy is, there's nothing else except the guy. Okay, he's surrounded by, by the wall and the door and the floor and so on. But, I mean, he goes from top left down towards the bottom right and which is an angle in itself which is nice this leg going out well the, 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 we're getting into details there but uh, and even the tilt of this the angle brings it down uh, nicely so there's no doubt what the subject is and that should be the case in practically every single shot that you take 
You know, I mean, there's there's one I showed you when I was talking about um, poorly composed shots. There's a subject there, and it's this guy going into the doorway. Um, okay, well, maybe the doorway is the subject as well. Uh, but uh, having said that, I mean, at least there's something to look at, and it's very clear. You're not scrabbling around in a shot like uh, in a shot like this one, trying to work out what the actual subject is, or a shot like this one, where it's just a mishmash of stuff, and you, there's nothing really happening. There's only people walking. If I compare that to um, to something like uh, like this. Then the subject is clearly well. There's there's this girl going past this face, and she's obviously looking at the poking out tongue and being amused by it. And then we're getting into uh, other other tips, such as the the story one. When I said there's no story, well here there is a story. She's going past. She's seeing this mask or this plaster cast sticking its tongue out, and she's being amused by it. That's the story of the photograph. There is a story, and. Uh, Here's another story, the one that I showed in the last video. It's the story of, well, we can imagine it, and that's part of the fun, isn't it? Because when you take a still shot, you have to imagine what happened before and what happened after. But it's clear what's happening during, and that's that this little kid is giving um, a coin to this old lady. That's the story. So we can imagine that beforehand he, he was going past, he probably asked his, his dad or his mom, you know, why is she doing that? And then they said, okay, well, give him a coin. So he probably gingerly ran up and put it in and then ran away. Uh, and, you know, so there's a story there. Whereas in a shot like this, uh, there ain't. Technically challenged was uh, one of my other... Um, things which uh, makes photographs suck. Now here we have someone who wasn't well enough aware of, of their camera's limitations or controls uh, to get a shot in the metro which wasn't blurred. And believe me, you generally can get a shot which isn't blurred if you know what you're doing. Uh, having said that, blur can be creative and I showed this picture in the last one where the runner is a bit blurred but then the runner is running so isn't that logical? If he were blurred and the background were blurred, it wouldn't be so cool. But the background is sharp, so there's that contrast. And what is sharp? Well, a couple snogging on a bench. And again, there's a story there, isn't there? You know, he's spending his life running and killing himself around some park, but the park also serves as a place for couples to, to smooch and uh, not put in much physical effort at all. Not on the bench, at least. All right, so where are we then? We've had uh, poorly composed, we've had technically challenged. Uh, you need to know what you're doing with blur. Uh, no story. Well, let's see if I've got other story pictures. Well, there's a... Um, is it a story or is it humor? Well, it's kind of both, isn't it? You can imagine that the pigeon is mocking the woman because, look, their legs are exactly the same sort of distance apart and there's a lovely echo there, completely by coincidence, of course. But um, but I was there, I got the shot, and in the end, that's what counts. Uh, I had another point, which was uh, no humour. Now, here is some humour. Uh, it doesn't have to be humour, I mean, it can just be happiness. But, you know, if you take a shot like this, there's no humour, there's no happiness, there's no nothing. And certainly in a shot like this, which is a snap of whatever was going on, it's more of a record of where the person was than anything else. Whereas here, it's a, a record of an event, and a happy one. She's she's killing herself with laughter because she knows she's being watched. She knows, I guess, she's got a, a sweet, funny face, if you like. She doesn't know what we know and what perhaps we are laughing at in that the caricaturist is actually doing a very good caricature of her, capturing all of her happiness and joy. and she But she's guessing that that's what's happening. So there's a lovely story, lovely humour and and very um, warm picture which I've uh, I've turned sepia for some reason which I can't remember. Okay just a couple more then. Um, yeah I talked about no originally or no originality or personality from the point of view of the photographer coming through which again is often the case. I mean what does that say to you about the photographer? Does it tell you that they're a creative person, that they're, they've tried hard to get the best angle, that they've tried to show some irony or connection between a couple of things? 
No, it doesn't, unfortunately, although I'm sure the person would like it to have. Whereas, well, here, there's a, I've got a couple more to show you. Here, for example, I've obviously tried. I've seen a face there, a funny face in this drain cover. And then I've played with it afterwards to kind of accentuate that. There was a circle there, and I added a circle to the photograph itself. And I waited for this person to go by as well. So it's kind of saying, you know, hey guys, I see funny faces in drain covers. Which, you know, whether you think that's worth it or not, it at least I'm able to inject something of my personality into the shot. Which makes it more interesting for all concerned, I would think. Uh, here's one that I, I forgot about. We were talking about um, uh, boring shots of famous monuments. Well, here's Here's a, a shot which hopefully isn't boring of an extremely famous monument. It's a Sacré Coeur in Paris, an amazing big white um, domed church on top of a hill. And that's my rendition of it. I couldn't begin to tell you how many boring shots there are of it. Or nice shots, you know, nice in inverted commas, but seriously lacking in originality. And that's my attempt. It, it was actually taken, can you guess, in a puddle and it wasn't that way around, it was upside down. So to make the dome the right way up, I turned the photograph upside down, in fact. And I, you know, the shadow there isn't a coincidence. You know, I waited, I planned it. So that's that's all part of it. Uh, a couple more stories, perhaps. Here's one on my uh, my seventh point, no originality or personality. I've tried to include myself in this one, and it's me. Can you imagine me in the morning, grotty and tired, sorry, groggy and tired, going to work, and this is my first coffee of the day as I'm waiting for my train, and boy, did I need it. So if you can inject a bit of your own personality into there. I even had another shot another day where it it hadn't given me a coffee. It had given me a, an empty cup of hot water because it had run out of coffee, and it had also not given me my change, which was written um, here. So, you know, look for that sort of humour any way you go. Uh, here's another one for the point of uh, a story. Is there a story here? Well, kind of, yeah, look. For a story, you need contrast. Here's someone lying. It's on the banks of the Seine. Someone lying down. All you can see is their feet. They're so lazy. And then there's these other two feet of someone who's quite active. You can see they're quite active because uh, there's a space in between the shadow and his foot and there also. So, you know, this guy's probably running or at least walking quite quickly and this guy has absolutely no intention whatsoever of doing so. Um, I showed you this one last time as well. A good example of unexpected humour. And uh, it was a, a chicken crossing the road. I don't know why. I didn't ask. If you have answers, then please send them to me. And I did write a little uh, article uh, about it. And um, you've got to watch out for them. And I, I saw it and I was, I thought, oh my goodness, that's funny. And then I I went across the road myself and then I thought, stop, stop, are you a photographer or what? Get that picture. So I got the picture. Humour is everywhere in the city uh, if you look for it. And also uh, there's a darker side to the city too. Um, this again would fall under my, uh, let's say, there's a story there or I've created one. And it's almost the opposite of humour, isn't it? It's very, very dark. This is the sort of poster we're confronted with day in, day out in Paris. and. Well, it would be okay on its own, but without this guy here, the danger would be that I'd taken a picture of a poster, and that isn't good enough for street photography. That doesn't count. You need to have created something yourself. You need to have added something. And, you know, I don't need to explain what I've done here. So look for those opportunities and take them or create them or wait for them to happen. But you've got to, you've got to think of them first, and as opposed to not thinking at all. Okay, I'm nearly at the end of this then. I think I've more or less uh, covered that. I talked about that one there. Um, I'll let you into a secret. I set it up. Uh, this lady was on a photography tour with me and I needed her to be there. Um, I didn't mention one thing though, and this comes under the technically challenged point. I needed to be technically proficient enough to make this thing crystal clear and her fuzzy. That's what I wanted. Now, if you'd pointed and shot, the general cam your average camera tries to get everything sharp so it would all have been sharp and I think it wouldn't have been as strong a photograph but I know how to get him sharp and her fuzzy or her sharp and him fuzzy I, you know this is the sort of thing a street photographer needs to be able to do almost without thinking um, whereas uh, a picture where it was completely sharp wouldn't have been as good 
I just needed her emotion. I didn't actually need all of her entire face. Okay, well, um, that's where I'm going to leave it. Thanks very much. I'll take you back to to the beginning and uh, leave you with... No, I'll leave you with this one. How about that? See you in Paris. Thanks for watching. Any comments would be uh, very valuable. And, uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you in Paris sometime. Bye-bye now.